Thank you so much. Good morning, good afternoon, uh, wherever you may be today. Um, I just really want to thank you all for the opportunity to join this discussion today. I'd especially like to thank Intrac for organizing the event, and, and I really appreciate the opportunity to be able to hear from the others on the panel. This is such an important discussion, and it is one that is very relevant to USAID's priorities. So just over a year ago, the head of USAID, Administrator Samantha Power, made a commitment to change how USAID works in order to ensure that local actors are at the center of what we do. And this commitment really recognizes that local leadership and ownership are of course essential for achieving sort of these longer term and sustained results. And it also acknowledges that the business of aid needs to become more equitable and more inclusive. And so I wanna take a minute to highlight three lines of effort that we're undertaking to advance localization goals. So first, we're adapting our policies and our programs to think about how they can foster locally led development in a way that is tied very specifically to each country or locality's unique conditions, doing so through things like local systems practice and local capacity strengthening. Second, we're channeling more of our funding directly to local partners. Administrator Power has announced that USAID will endeavor to provide at least a quarter of our program funds directly to local partners by the end of 2025. And third, expanding beyond the lens of who we fund to focus on shifting power to local actors by creating space for them to influence and exercise leadership over what our partnerships look like. Administrator Power has set a goal for us that by 2030, at least half of our programming will place local communities in the lead to set priorities, co-design projects, drive implementation, or measure and evaluate the results of our programs. I also just want to note that underpinning both of these goals is an inclusive development lens, which of course is the view that all people, including those who are marginalized or underrepresented, must be included at the development process, and by extension into how we think about making progress towards these goals. So localization without inclusion, you know, really can risk exacerbating some of the existing inequalities and, and limit our progress. So you know, there's this group, of course, is thinking, okay, this is great. This isn't really new. And of course, that's right, right? You know, the international community has been talking about local ownership for decades. And of course, engaging local actors has been part of USAID's vision, you know, in some ways since its early days and, and recently in particular through some, you know, particular targeted initiatives. But to me, that's the fact that it's not new is actually encouraging, right? If you think about continuity, even if it's not always linear, what that really reflects is staying power and the need to continue to push forward on this particular agenda. That said, there are also some important ways I think that the current effort is different and we can think about this in three main ways. So first is the framing. And I think Charles really illustrated this well up front, noting that, but for USAID in the past, what we have done is we've really emphasized local funding as the main way to advance localization. But while thinking about control of resources is an important aspect of shifting power, it's really only part of the story. And so to be able to shift power, what we need is a more comprehensive set of approaches that focuses on how we create space for local actors to exercise leadership at all stages. So localization is not just about who we fund, but it's about how we work. The second thing that I think is really different about the moment we see now is around the sources of support. So there is really a new consensus now that we need to change the business of aid to reckon with some of the historical inequities that have been baked into the aid system. And this consensus didn't exist in the same way 10 years ago, but it has gained traction, I, you know, thanks in no small part to this global movement around diversity, equity, inclusion, and accessibility. And then the third thing I want to highlight is about the knowledge base. So we have accumulated a lot of lessons learned about engaging local partners uh, over the last 10 years and more, right? So we know that localization efforts are time and staff intensive. We know that local actors continue to face a number of barriers to working with USAID. And so what we're doing is using that knowledge base to take informed steps forward by revisiting and revising our policies and our strategies and coming up with new tools. So I just wanna highlight a couple of these um, uh, in the next couple of minutes before, we, before I conclude. So first is really about how USA can make itself more accessible to local actors. So some of the things that we're trying to do are use more proactive communications to be able to reach local actors. We also want to be able to expand opportunities for local partners to engage in our acquisitions and assistance processes in languages other than English. We want to use more flexible and more adaptable and more simple award mechanisms, including more results-based mechanisms. 
And we're also exploring ways to help more local partners recover all of their costs, including indirect costs, which is related, of course, to the, the, prior, the prior presentation. Uh, we're also expanding how we think about doing co-creation, offering opportunities to ensure that the design and the priorities of projects are done in cooperation with those that will be implementing the project and those that will be affected by the project as well. We also recognize that working with partners who are new to USAID can come with risks, both for USAID as well as for the partners themselves. So what we have done is articulated a risk posture that encourages smart and disciplined risk taking. It encourages working with partners to identify risks and plan for their mitigation. And the last thing I just wanna highlight is USAID's new local capacity strengthening policy. So a lot of USAID's work has capacity strengthening elements to it. And the local capacity strengthening policy really commits USAID to doing this in a different kind of way. It commits the agency to strengthening capacity in ways that respond to local actor priorities and are done in service of the growth and development of sustainable organizations, networks, and individuals, and not just done in service of delivering a particular set of results under a funded activity, and they are not just done in service of developing organizations that can be USAID partners. So I'll stop there, but I wanna thank you, uh, you know, so much again for the opportunity to be with you here today, and, and I really look forward to the discussion. Thank you.